everybody. You know, today I was about to head out on an instrument flight plan cross country and uh, I realized, man, there is a lot that goes into that. Uh, in order to be safe and proficient and prepared, there's a lot of pre-flight planning that really goes into this. And today, that's our topic. Welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the instrument rating course. You know, to be successful in this course, there are three things. What were those again? Oh yeah, now I remember. Number one, you are in Epic's online course and studying this material online. Number two, you are watching these videos in parallel to that content. Boy, are we glad you're here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And what's the third one? That's right. Review all of this one-on-one -on -one with your flight instructor. Now let's get back to some of this IFR cross-country pre-flight action. And you know what today folks we are very honored to have with us the flight instructor at Epic Flight Academy who authored the slides in this course for you, Mr. Austin Decola. It's a pleasure, Mike. Hey, Austin, welcome aboard. Can you talk to us a little bit more about IFR pre-flight action and planning? Absolutely, Mike. Thanks. So before any cross-country flight, it's absolutely incumbent on the pilot that you observe all relevant information prior to that flight. One common strategy is to go through the PAVE checklist. P is for pilot. We evaluate all factors concerning the pilot themselves. A for aircraft, we'll be discussing aircraft airworthiness to ensure that the aircraft is properly equipped and maintained for the flight to be made. V would be for environmental factors. There's a lot to talk about here. And also external pressures, things like get there itis. The first thing to really consider when planning your cross country is whether you as the pilot are ready or not for that flight. That means making sure that you have all of your necessary personal documents on board the aircraft and that you're current as well as well as ensuring that all charts, if you're using a, uh, an electronic flight bag, uh, that everything is up to date. Now for the aircraft, of course, everything needs to be fully ready for the flight. This means that the aircraft needs to have all of its required documents and all of the inspections need to be met. The aircraft also needs to meet all of the equipment requirements as per FAR 91-205, both VFR and IFR. Hey Austin, I think there's quite a few documents and inspections involved here, right? That's right. There's a ton. Maybe we ought to have them review this in our online course and go through that with their flight instructor. That's right. It can be pretty easy to forget these items, especially after you're moving into instrument. Now, external factors. FAR 91103 tells us that prior to beginning any flight, the pilot needs to learn all available information regarding certain items. A helpful acronym we can use to memorize these items is the NWCRAFT acronym. We'll go through these. Starting with NOTAMs. There are many different types of NOTAMs, but two in particular are of big concern for us when planning our IFR cross country. NOTAM D. NOTAM D concerns things like runway closures, non-standard taxiway markings and signs, and anything on the airport grounds that the pilot needs to be aware of. FDC NOTAMs, on the other hand, involve aircraft procedures, for example, you might have an instrument approach where the DA or MDA is raised. The pilot needs to be aware of these, and they might not be published on the instrument approach plate. You can view all available NOTAMs by contacting flight service or by using automated sources such as ForeFlight. Weather information. So before any flight, as you already know, we need to obtain a proper weather briefing. This means getting a full legal briefing and not just obtaining independent weather information from AWC. Known ATC delays. At very large or busy airports, it's possible that general aviation traffic might not be prioritized. Whether or not you're an Airbus A380 on approach to Georgia, uh, Georgia's Atlanta airport, or if you are going to Key West in your Cessna 172, you need to make sure that that airport is going to have the facilities to handle your arrival. One way to do this is by visiting fly.faa.gov, where you can view a list of airports that are currently experiencing delays. Remember, you may plan for a flight that's only one hour, 
But if delays cause your flight to be two hours long, your fuel planning may not be adequate for the flight that you're making. Runway lengths and distances and airport information. Now, flying a Cessna 172, it's easy to fall under the misconception that all runways will be of appropriate length for use. However, as we start to fly larger and heavier aircraft, runways will start to become more exclusive. Whether or not you're in your Cessna 172 or again in an Airbus A380, you need to ensure that the runways of use at the airport that you're going to are suitable for your flight. This means checking runway lengths as well as runway materials. You can do so by visiting the airport facility directory page in the chart supplement. Alternate airports. Now on an IFR flight plan, there are some scenarios that will require that you include an alternate airport in your flight plan. The rules can be quite complex. So what you should refer to is lesson 4.2.2, where we go in depth about alternate airports. Fuel requirements. The fuel requirements for an IFR flight are a little bit different than for a VFR flight. In some ways, more simple. For an IFR flight, you need to have enough fuel to complete the leg from your, from your departure airport to your destination airport, and then to continue for an additional 45 minutes. Now, if you have filed an alternate airport, you need enough fuel to get from your departure airport to your arrival airport, then enough fuel to continue from your, depart from your destination airport to your alternate airport, and thereafter have 45 minutes left for your fuel reserves. Takeoff and landing data and performance data. This sort of goes hand in hand with your runway lengths and airport information. In addition to understanding what your airport facilities offer you in terms of runway lengths, you need to ensure that your aircraft's performance matches. One common pitfall when calculating your takeoff performance and landing performance is failing to observe the notes. On any aircraft, your pilot operating handbook is likely to have some notes. For example, in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk, there are notes about headwind and tailwind components as well as landing on an other than paved surface. Make sure you observe these because this can make the difference between a go and no go decision. So Austin, it sounds like there's a pretty fair amount of information that goes into pre-flight planning for this instrument flight. There's a ton. Yeah, and once we have all of that information at hand, we're ready to move on to the sequence of our cross-country flight plan. That's right, Mike. Yeah, well, hey, thanks so much for joining us today. It's I appreciate a pleasure. it. Want to join me in the sign-off? I would love to. All right, here we go. Thanks, everybody, and see you next time.